Steve. Yes. First question for you. Okay. Um, how good was Firetown? How good was Fire? Now I wasn't in Fire Town. No, but you were. I was a were, roadie for Roadie, something. yeah. So that's roadie. that's why I asked you because the other two they were. They weren't as good as garbage. No. No. I'll leave it at that. Okay. And how good was Angelfish? Awesome. Totally, fucking awesome. Yeah. No, actually they were really great, and that's when we yeah. found Trilly is because that, that I like that band, yeah. and her voice sounded great, and we loved the stuff they were doing. We thought it might fit with what we wanted to do. Okay, and how and how do you look back on Angelfish? Um, well, I feel good about Angelfish because it did get me my job in, in garbage, you know, and uh, it was it was, I mean, it was my first sort of attempt at being a front singer, so it was fraught with self doubt. Yeah. But um, I ended up having an amazing experience making the record, and then Steve saw the video, which was played only once on MTV, and so then. Only only uh, yeah, once. only once at something like two o'clock in the morning because he never sleeps, and um, and then he was like, "She's got a good voice. Let's call her up and see if she'll sing on our record." And mm -hmm. called me up, and I came over to sing on one track, and then we all just got along so well that I ended up doing the entire record. And what was it for you? Um, I read somewhere. I, I, I don't know if it's true, but that your first audition didn't go that well. Was it true or? No, that's true. It was a disaster actually, yeah, okay. and I could. I, I was frustrated, and they. I could tell we're disappointed and um, it was really awkward and I couldn't wait to get out of there and I because I was intimidated you know it's really intimidating meeting three well-known respected producers and going into a room with them and try and make music off the yeah. like off the bat and I went home back to Scotland and their manager called and said to me you know how did you feel it went and I said I thought it was a disaster and she went well the band kind of feel that way too would you be up for giving it another try and I was like yeah I'd be up for giving it a try and so I went back and... It was I, better, better the second time. What, do, what was it for you the first time? What, how, how, how come it was a bit <laughs> ten star? Oh, it was beautiful. <laughs> um, it was awkward because we didn't really know what we were doing. You know, we wanted somebody to come in and be a fourth person and help us write songs. Yeah. And, uh, and so that means, unfortunately, at that time, we didn't really have any words for songs. And so we said, Trill, let's go in there and uh, make something up. And I don't think that she really liked that idea at the time, you know. Well, I'd never written, right, though. Really I'd never written a song before I joined Garbage. Looking back, that's a pretty obnoxious thing to do to somebody. <laughs> what, what was, the, what was the, the song that you played that first, that you did that first First song? Audition? Well, we worked on Vowel. Didn't yeah, write, yeah, Vowel and Queer. First and Queer. Yeah. And Stupid Girl was uh, pretty soon after that. And when did you feel at ease the second time? Pretty much when you came in, or...? No, I don't. I wouldn't go as far as to say I felt at ease, but I knew they wanted me to do well. You know, it's a different psychological approach when you know that they want you to fit. Yeah. And so I felt, I guess, less judged and more sort of supported. And I, for whatever reason, I guess it just sort of panned out. And then we went drinking and went out basically to the cafe all night. And then by then, of course, we were best buddies. Ah, I love you. I love you too. Let's stay in a band together. Okay. okay. Um, did you feel? Immediately at ease with writing your with writing your lyrics, or did it had, did it grow on you? It was really intimidating at first because I knew, you know, when you've just joined somebody else's band, you're you become a sort of uh, tool for them in a way, you know, because I couldn't just, or at least I personally didn't come in and just put my stamp on things because I didn't feel confident enough and I'd never done it before and so I wanted to please them, you know. And how did you do that? With brilliance and female intuition. I mean, I don't know how I did it. I guess, you know, we, oh, we, all, sh we all shared similar musical influences and I knew what they liked and what I liked um, and I just pulled sort of, you know, a, a direction from or all our commonalities, all our musical commonalities. But did you talk about the lyrics? I mean, maybe you said to her, well, maybe you should write about this or about that. Or did you feel totally free? What, what, what was it like? I don't think like? we've ever talked about No. Lyrics. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. I remember once going to a swing park with Duke um, for the lyrics to Not My Idea. And, and I said to him, you know, I've got these, got these lyrics and I think it might be good for this one song we've got. And he went, OK, sing them to me. And I was like, oh. And so we were singing in the park and I sang the lyrics to him and he went, they're great, let's use them. And that was kind of the first sort of 
moment when I felt a lot more confident. Okay. You know what's weird is nobody's ever asked us those questions no, before. It's kind of wild. Yeah.